Good morning, everybody. It's May 13th, 2022. Friday morning, about 9.30 a.m. And I'm working on the bead today. Continuing with the brakes. As I have to do, first I got to clean the brake fluid from under the hood. There's a lot of brake fluid, but keep in mind brake fluid will eat up your paint, but it's not going to eat up your metal. So, so just keep that in mind that if you're not going to repaint, then you don't have to get it all off. So, this is my little shed here. Okay, let's go over to the table here. So, I'm going to clean off the brake fluid first. Then I have to go to the hardware store because I'm missing some hardware, you know, bits and pieces that previous owners or mechanics didn't put back, like a bolt here, a lock washer there. Um, so, here's... Once again, here's the old master cylinder. I have to take off this piece, banjo bolt and fitting, put it at the same angle on the new one in this hole. But there's a, supposedly there's a valve in here that we have to transfer from the old one to the new one. And there's two lock washers in here. That's just the yellow cap that was in this hole. Don't worry about that. Two lock wash, uh, two copper washers that go on either side. One goes in here and one goes there. Okay. Then you tighten that in prior to putting it in the vehicle. And you'll be all set. Here is my, I'm doing a quick bench bleeding. Bought this kit. Uh, I don't know how good it's going to work, but it looks like it has all the different sizes. Just to get most of the air out of the master. I've never bench bled a master cylinder before. Should be good. I got all my rags, which are my extra large v-neck undershirts cut in two. Okay. And, uh, because I got to clean a lot, a lot of brake fluid up. Um, for the, uh, clutch and brake master cylinder, um, clevis pins, I bought, uh, some new cotter pins, because my old cotter pins were old. So here's a nice kit, costs like eight dollars, and uh, all different sizes so you could get the right size. Here's another rag in case I need it. Here, uh, I'm also doing the two front brake lines for the MGB, the uh, rubber hoses, because I don't know if the old ones are good, and you can't tell. You really can't tell because you can't see the insides of them. And here's all the fittings to do the brake the brake lines for some reason they had uh, two different size copper washers I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use but you only need one per side so I'm either going to use the two small ones or the two big ones depending on what's on the car internal tooth lock washers this is a bracket of some sort two brackets and, and the two uh, the two new nuts uh, so this is all the hardware I have my weed whacker out also this is another project I'm just changing the battery in that there's the old one it's coming in the mail this morning okay so let's quickly go to the car I don't know how the weather's going to treat me today today here's what everything's looking like still taken apart I'm just going to wipe up some of this brake fluid so I could determine you know what nuts and bolts are, are missing and uh, put most of them back here's a reminder of all my parts uh, up front here they're in order believe it or not I know where they go so that's all I'm not gonna record everything because I do have a lot of work to do and the, the last and final um, step will be the uh what's it called the bleeding of the brakes which i don't know if i'm going to get to that today depending on the weather we have some showers this afternoon okay let's get to it so i cleaned it a little bit and i cleaned out those two front holes those two little front holes that that box screws into okay now I clean out the holes they look like 1032s they could be 1024s they could be metrics so what I did was 
I gathered an assortment of different screws, 1032s, 1024s, some other ones here. I'm just going to lightly thread them in those two front holes. See those two front holes there for the, for the cover. And then I'm going to go to the hardware store and get them. I also, uh, gonna, I'm also going to bring that bolt. I don't know if you could see it by the washer. That bolt is one of the two that comes in from the uh, passenger compartment into the bracket back there. That side is missing on mine. It only had the one bolt on this side, so I'm going to get that bolt too. So this way I'll have uh, more hardware in here. Three, three or four bolts instead of just uh, the one that was holding it. Ta-da! I found some screws that fit perfectly. Wait a moment and we'll compare the uh, threads. Hold on. Okay, we're back at the picnic table and those two front holes, those two small threaded holes are... Uh, I tried this one on the left, which I believe is a 1032 thread. Uh, he went in a little and stopped. This just happens to have a tapered end. Um, but the two on the right fit perfectly. And I believe these are 1024s. Now, I'm not 100% sure. They could be metric, but um, you could see the difference in the thread. 1032 is a fine thread, and 1024 is a more coarse thread. So whatever... Um, Weld nuts uh, MG used. Those two front holes uh, seem to work with this kind of coarse thread, not the not the finer thread. I don't know if that helps you. Hopefully it does. I mean, there was nothing in those holes. You couldn't even see the holes. They had so much crud in them. So, uh, but these fit perfect. I mean, I screwed them all the way down, like about here or so so they're, they're definitely the right thread I just got lucky and found these in my toolbox now this bolt here is the one that comes in from the foot from the passenger from the you know where the driver's foot well is this goes through the firewall into the master cylinder bracket there's one on each side I'm missing one so I'm going to head to the hardware store and get um, this bolt so I could have two. I tested this on the right side and it worked. So the left side and the right side use the same thread. Okay, this is an example of the wrong type of screw to use to hold this uh, cover in, okay? Those weld, nut, those weld nuts, those threads down there are um, machine threads. This is either, this is a sheet metal screw, okay? You don't use this type of thread for your battery box. Mine happen to have one or two of these in them, so. This car was pretty well cared for, but um, whoever did this, pulled this cover off, lost all the original hardware and, and threw these in. These are the wrong type of threads. You need... Um, I believe they're 1024 or the uh, metric equivalent. They're definitely a number 10. Um, they're not a 1032 because mine are, these are coarse threads. Uh, so the four bolts in the uh, cover there are probably 1024s or the metric equivalent. And the two that come through the firewall are, uh, as you could see, they appear to be quarter inch 0.250 so these could these I'm gonna guess could be quarter 20s or maybe quarter 24s it's a pretty fine thread but I'm gonna let my hardware store match them up and I don't have to worry about it I really measured the diameter just to make sure I get the right size uh, washers okay bye okay back from the hardware store I went with hex bolts here instead of Phillips. 
and uh, these are the ones that come through the firewall. So we're all set. And I got propane while I was there too, so uh, good for about a year with the barbecue. That's good. And batteries for my flashlights. I have rechargeable flashlights, but not all of them are rechargeable. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Those are the three. Now, there's supposed to be one here, but somebody sheared off the head, so I'm going to leave that one out for now. Three is plenty, especially because it was only held in with one. So three in this, this these spots would be uh, more than sufficient to support this. Just taking a reference measurement with my 13th, 16th socket on this. You want this angle to be the same when you transfer it over to the new master. So uh, I'm measuring 0.390. So when I put my socket on the new one, I should make sure I'm measuring uh, 0.390 between the end of that fitting and my socket. Okay. Let me see if I could do that for you. 0.390 right there. A socket the socket moved a little bit but it's 390 okay just for kicks I'm gonna pull off this fitting even though there's one here I want to see if there's a valve in the front and we'll see if there's a valve in the back okay I need a little more oomph so uh, a little more torque so I just clamped the old uh, master into the vise we're in mg right now mg no not morris garages but my garage so we're in my garage right now we're going to pull out these off and see what's inside this way i could come down this with a hammer if i need to or all my weight to get that fitting off okay one slight tap with the hammer See what's inside here. Ah. Let me give you some light here. There is something in there. Hmm, no spring. But this little uh, valve was in there. Like so. Well, maybe. Oh, wait a minute, there is a spring. There is a spring. Here's the spring. So the new one should have this. I don't want to take off, take this fitting off the new one. It should have this. So I'm going to just put this back. Okay, this is the old one. Just going back on that fitting. Okay, I'm going to take this off, see what's under here. Okay, so there are two copper washers on my old one, so somebody did that right. Good to know.
Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's a lot of metal shavings here. Let me move, put this fitting somewhere safe. Hold on. Okay, you're not going to be able to see this, but inside here, I do see, I do see a plastic um, valve in there. So they put it in. So that's good. And here's the back one, of course, does not have it. So we're going to transfer it from the old one. But this one has it. I see it. I see the plastic in there. So that's good. Not a whole lot of information on the internet about these things. Just a bunch of people arguing about them on the forums. Incidentally, you might want to save your old part here. The reservoir is good and the cap is If the cap is good, my cap's good. And uh, so there's the valve. Let's transfer it. Place it there. Got to get the spring out. Spring's happy. Here's the valve. Okay. So I'm just gonna put going to put the new copper washers on here and tighten it down at the proper angle. I'm not gonna record that. You get the idea. Okay, bye. Okay, so I was just in my garage and uh everything's on the two copper washers. See, one on the inside, one on the outside. Put my socket on, and there's my 390. So I know that's at the perfect angle. So you know, it's a crude way of measuring it, but it's fine. Got my 390. This is just my uh, 13 16 socket. Um, this is where I took the initial measurement, just to just to get that angle right. There you go. Doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you're pretty close, it'll be okay. Because this, you know, the line has some play in it, but try to get as close as you can. So I'm going to put this aside now because eventually this will have, to, I'm going to put it back in the vise and, and, and bench bleed it. Okay, moving right along. Okay, I loosened the top brake line, got the front jacked up, and uh, you know I have no master. There's all air in these in the system, so it's a good time to change your brake lines. There's air in the system, so it doesn't matter because I'm doing the master. So I'm just changing my two front brake lines. I'm not going to take a lot of video of this because it's uh, pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. Got the car jacked up and a wheel turned all the way to the right for the left side. And then the wheel turned all the way to the left for the to do the right hose. I think I can get to it like this. See? Okay. Okay, the left front brake line's done. And uh, I noticed something different on the brake lines. Um, well, aside of the fact that there's a wash, the washer's on this one. I put the washer on the new one. This one is, if you can look, it's flat. The face of it is flat, and on the old one, it's got a taper to it. So maybe the new one is a better uh, improved design uh, than the old uh, tapered one. Same thing on the... Um, that was the caliper side. This is the brake line side. You see, the old one had a taper, and the new one. 
Oh, wait a minute. No, it does have a... a it, I'm sorry. This side has a slight taper. Yeah, this... The brake line side has a slight taper on the new one. See? But, on the caliper side, it does not have a taper. So there's the uh, passenger side. So I'll find out if this uh, this side not having a taper is going to be a problem. If it leaks, it's a problem. But maybe it's just an improved design. I mean, I got it from a reputable uh, place, so they, they know what they're doing. Okay. Bye. Okay, and here's the passenger side. New rubber hose. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Don't forget your lock washer up there. Tighten everything good. There's a lock washer on the top under the nut there. And on this side, don't forget your copper washer, you'll have all kinds of leaks. So about that taper I was talking about, I'm wondering if the taper, if it makes the taper as you're tightening it for a good seal. Maybe it's a softer metal than the caliper and it just makes the taper as you're tightening it. I'm not really sure. Or maybe it's just a better design. So there you go, passenger side's done. Okay, getting ready to bleed. Incidentally, if you get the dormant kit, these, I use the 3 8 24. 3 8 by 24 threads per inch. Those little guys. Dot 3 fluid. Dot three I like better because I read that it has more glycol so it absorbs water slower than dot four. I thought dot four would be better. But uh depends on your application. If you're just doing regular driving, you don't need uh anything special. Use the to use the dot three because you can have longer times between brake fluid changes because uh, it absorbs water at a lesser rate than DOT4 because DOT4 has less glycol in it. That's what I read anyway. I was going to get DOT4, but DOT3 it is. Okay, so basically I'm just going to work this back and forth until I see no more bubbles in these tubes. I only have two hands, so I can't record this, but you just work this back and forth slowly don't rush it don't let the tubes come out of the uh, brake fluid don't let them come out make sure they're submerged okay bye okay um, after hold on okay Basically what I did was I put the uh, I had an angle of mass I pulled this forward the whole cage forward angled the master back squeeze this through the hole here You know you got to wrestle it a little bit and then I immediately I put the side line in first then I did the the rear one so I did the 
one on the fr I did the front port first the brake line screwed that on then I did the uh, rear one okay so that's they're both very tight but I put the uh, bolt in just to stabilize and try to keep it in position I didn't have the lock washer or the nut on the back of it I just stuck the bolt through the front here see but uh I didn't have the lock washer the, the bolt was just to kind of stabilize it you don't have to do that okay now I'm going to mount the uh, master cylinder onto the bracket this one's in ready to be tightened but don't tighten anything until you get them both in the bottom one I might put through the back I might put the bolt through the back and then put the nut on the front that may be easier I'm not sure but it's in it's a mess fluids everywhere I mean check for leaks of course this thing was my my, my bleeding was a mess the the plastic connectors leaked so don't have really the perfect bleed on the master then I put the cover on it, then I brought it over to the car. And uh, it's going to drip out, but you have plenty of time to get your lines on before the master gets too low. So don't sweat it. I, I, put, I had the cover on. I filled it all the way. I had the cover on. And um, you can get these two lines in plenty of time before the master runs low, okay, where you're going to get air in it. So... Don't worry about that. And if you didn't bleed it, then that's fine too. Just then you could take your time, I guess, because you know, there's air in it already. And uh, don't cross thread these fittings. Make sure you're going in at a right angle. Do not mess around with them. Push the push the threaded part all the way against the flared part. I find that to be easy when you push the threaded part because otherwise it gets hung up on the pipe back here and you can't turn it you think it's tight and then it gets loose because it's hung up on the pipe which is not a perfect circle it's elliptical in some places okay we move on all right i have this telescopic mag telescopic uh, magnet so i'm going to try to put this put this through uh inside the car I'm gonna go inside the car and there may be enough room to push this through the hole through the back of the master okay that should be pretty easy all right I didn't go through the car because the magnets going to attract to everything I was going to try to go through this port but here's what I did I put the bolt in a half inch uh, socket and then I have a little 3 h extension so I should be able to go through the side hole like this. Okay. Turn this in. Push it through the hole. Like that. Boop. So we'll see if that works. I may have to tape this in there. We'll see. Okay, I put a small piece of masking tape. I could go through the car with a 3 8 extension. You know, like that right there. And just uh, get this right right through the uh, mounting hole, the bottom hole of the master cylinder. Because that's a lot easier than trying to get the lock washer and the nut on the other side. Okay, everybody. She's in. Got a bottom nut with the lock, with the bolt coming in from the engine compartment. The tape worked, we tightened up the bottom nut, and then we couldn't get the half inch socket off the head of the bolt because while we were tightening it, the half inch socket got wedged against the body of the master cylinder, we couldn't get out, so I told my helper to just back it out a little bit, okay, and then I just used the ratchet, and you, you use the speed method where you, you turn the nut so fast that eventually the head on the other side catches and then you could tighten it okay and then we just tighten the top here half inch you could get a 
open end wrench on this lock washer and nut. So basically the way I did it is the bolt coming through the top from the front of the car, flat and, a, and the lock washer and the nut there. Then on the bottom, the opposite, because it's easier to get lock washer and nut while you're in the engine compartment than trying to get that when you're in the car. That's a little bit difficult, I think. Okay? Alright. So all the brake lines are hooked up. There's no more fluid anywhere. So now is the easy part. Bolt down the bracket that holds these two masters. Bolt that down. Then, then uh, secure the bottom pivot point with the... Wait a minute. No, the bracket has to be bolted down first because you can't get to this one. Yeah, so you bolt down that bottom bracket. Two bolts from inside the car. And then, uh, I don't know, two, two here and two on this side, I think. Yeah. And then, uh, then once you bolt the bracket that has the master cylinders in it, once you bolt that down, then push this pivot bolt back all the way in, and there's a big lock washer and nut. That's that one back here. That one, big lock washer and nut goes on there. You, so after this bracket's on, you tighten the, uh, you push this through, see? You push it through, and you tighten it. Then you put your clevis pins in. And your, um, what are they called? Cotter pins. Well, first you put the, you push the pin in the, the shaft. You got to put that shaft in on this side, too. I hope I'm going to be able to get that on. Uh-oh, I tightened everything. Shoot. Yeah, I should be able to get that on. Yeah, I should be able to get that on. But get that on, and then you put your clevis pins and your cotter pins. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Incidentally, when my helper was in the car, guiding that bottom bolt in, I was in here getting on the threads with my Captain Hook and uh, helping guide the, uh, the bolt into the bottom mounting hole of the master cylinder. I don't know if I told you that before. Uh, first, you want to make sure you have a clean shot. Make sure the holes are aligned. You can slightly tighten the top bolt, which is what I did, to keep it in place. And then tighten them both. But this really helped because uh, it grips the threads and uh, it was very helpful. And uh, make sure you put something in your carbs because I saw a little dirt got in my back carb here. Just like a couple of things. I wiped them out. That's the only problem with these, they face upward, so very easy to catch a lot of dirt. And uh, what I did here was just, uh, I just did a quick gray spray paint on that and to prevent it from rusting anymore. Next time I'll replace it, it's an easy part to replace. But the holes aren't uh, really oblong, they're pretty round. So it's got a lot of life left in it. Okay. Okay, I had to bring it in the shed because it's a little overcast now. And it's uh just give this a little protective coat. I did the inside already. And I masked the uh the switch inside too. Alright. Let that dry. We'll give it another coat. Okay. Good afternoon. It's the next day. I just uh, put the two new cotter pins in. 
I used a needle nose pliers, the flathead screwdriver, small one, a medium sized, and a, a vice grip to get those nice and bent over. Hopefully I won't have to take these out anytime soon. But they'll come out. And the old one of the old ones broke right in my hand. The little one on the right. A piece broke off it. That's the one that was on the clutch. Here's the one that was on the brake. So I mean these things get so brittle. Just throw them out and get new ones. Here's my kit. I used uh, two of these. They're, they're the sizes. I'm not sure what size this is. I'd have to measure it. Maybe uh, looks about an inch. 20 or 25 millimeter long. Okay, what I did was uh, thread and uh, screw down these two bolts that come from inside the passenger compartment. I didn't fully tighten them so I could have play in the bracket to line up the other holes for the other bolts inside the engine compartment. So uh, they're almost tight, but there's a little play in them so I can move the battery box around. Battery box. I keep saying battery box. The uh, master cylinder bracket around. And line up all the holes. So these are just about tight, but I just left a little bit of play in them. Beautiful. Now I'm going to just get some washers and um, uh, tight, uh, put the four bolts to secure the uh, master, master cylinder bracket down for good. Okay, I'm just mounting the... Uh, bracket here whatever you do don't tighten any of these bolts until uh, until you have them all threaded so I have that one in these two over here these were hard to get to but they're in put my torch on here so see those two those are in but they're not tightened that one's in I just got to do that one big one in the back there and the ones inside the car are also not tight this way you can line up the holes here a lot easier also I, I gotta say it's amazing that um, there's all different size heads here I, I got half inch heads over here half inch Maybe seven sixteenths. No, maybe ten millimeters, eleven millimeters. All different sizes. Eleven millimeters, half inch, and seven sixteenths. Eleven millimeters inside the car. All different sizes, just about. Only a few of them are the same, but it's okay. This big one in the back is easy to start because you can get your hands back here and start it then you can get your ratchet on it it's already threading nicely look at that beautiful okay so before I tighten these the ones under the hood I'm gonna tighten bring the I'm gonna pull a box that way towards the past towards the uh, footwell by tightening the two bolts inside the car first and then I'm going to tighten these four down and then that's it for the bracket. It's done. Okay, these two are tightened. Those are 11 millimeters. These little quarter inch drive here. And just a little trick. If you want to get the start the screw, just just use your hand, put the socket on this bolt, and turn it down until it gets a little tight. Otherwise, you're just going to be pissing in the wind trying to use a ratchet because because of the friction in the in the ratcheting mechanism. So you're just going to be turning the bolt like this, turning it, tightening, tight, tightening it, loosening, tightening it, loosening, tightening. You're not going to get anywhere. So just get the bolt down manually with the socket first, 
and then you could uh, use the ratchet. All right, this one here is the half inch. This one here is an 11 millimeter. This front one here that's hard to get to is uh, Eleven millimeter. Oh, lost my sock. And this one here is a ten millimeter. Okay, so the two front ones were 11 millimeters on my car, which that doesn't mean anything with regard to your car. This one here with the nice shiny washer was a 10 millimeter. And then you have this big mama one back there. That's a half inch. So I don't know if that helps you. Did I do the two rear ones? I don't even know if there are two rear ones. Maybe there are. But four is plenty, plus the two against the firewall. This thing is not going anywhere. So all that's left to do is to put the uh, cover on, which has the brake light. And then bleed the brakes. But I may leave the bleeding. I'm going to leave the bleeding out because there's plenty of bleeding videos. I'm just following the Haynes procedure, which means it says remove this connector. Rotate your uh, back to switch out three turns. And uh, the Haynes manual says to do nearest to furthest. So uh, left front, right front, and then uh, whatever is the next nearest in the rear, and then the furthest. So that's the way I'm going to bleed them. But I'm going to leave that out of this video because this video is getting long. But that would be the final step. And when you're bleeding, check all your connections for leaks. Because if you have a leak, you're going to have to take this whole thing apart again. But it's better than crashing and burning. One thing I forgot to uh, mention. Is the, uh, hold on. I forgot to mention, uh, I forgot to put the lock washer in the flat, which is right here. So you, so now that you got that bottom crazy bolt in, you can put this uh, lock washer and flat on here. I just pushed the bolt through. I never took it all the way out. Incidentally, all the bolts I have here that mount this battery box have a split lock and a flat on them. Split lock and flat. So I basically uh, taped, I used masking tape and taped these bolts inside my sockets. Masking tape. Then once you get it started, just rip the masking tape off. The masking tape, you tape the bolt inside the socket with the flat, with the lock washer and the flat washer. And then you thread it first. Then you, once it's threaded, you take off the masking tape and just button them down. So that's the way I did it, or maybe, I don't know, magnetic's a pain in the neck because uh, everything's magnetic in here, so you'll be fighting with it. So once again, I'm just going to tighten these down on that bottom pivot point. Once again, another trick I use, I'm going to put this nut back on the bottom pivot uh, shaft there. Um, 
get your socket, make sure your socket fits before you put the nut on. Because otherwise you're going to be fighting in hard to reach areas. Okay? So this was a bad demonstration because this kit is not big enough. It only goes up to 14 millimeters. So I have to go to my other toolbox. Okay, the nut on the bottom shaft is uh, 9 sixteenths. There it is. Fits perfect. So I'm going to tighten that on there now. Okay, I just I'm gonna shut the phone off here so I can do this because I may have to hold the head on the other side if it's spinning. Yeah, it is spinning. Okay, bye. Okay, so I'm using a closed end uh, wrench to uh, hold the head, and I'm using a ratchet. Both are nine sixteenths, so you could use your nine sixteenths to tighten this up, and uh, that'll be all nice. Okay, I'm in the car, making sure the pedals move free. Of course, the brake pedal goes down to the floor because I have to bleed the system. Clutch, beautiful. So, everything's moving free because I also oiled the pivot points. You don't, you don't want to keep doing this and make your cylinder run out of uh, brake fluid either. I'm going to go check that now. And then, don't forget to put your little access cover back on in, inside the car. That's this rubber cover with the nice molded in handle. Just gonna grease this up with some lithium grease. There's already 20 weight oil up here. I put some oil on it and I put a, some I put some oil on the bottom shaft as well. That's all. So keep it nice, nice and smooth, prevent it from rusting. Okay, as you can see, the cover's on with my nice new shiny hardware. That's in sharp contrast to the rest of the engine bay and I'm ready to connect my uh, two wires I have this uh, cleaner it's deoxid I use it on elect uh, audio stuff it cleans the contacts so I'm just spraying it in can't hurt That's it. Okay, now, so the only thing I didn't do, which is very important, but it's not part of this video because I don't have a helper right now, is uh, bleeding the brakes. Okay. And uh, that's about it. Oh, and, and putting my air cleaners back on. So, uh, Plenty of videos on bleeding the brakes on YouTube, so. But like I said, I'm using the Haynes procedure. It's pretty straightforward unless uh, sometimes this causes a problem. 
but uh, you can get around that. So that's it. The cover's on. Oh, I put in the uh, the cover on the inside. Don't forget to put your rubber cover on the inside. And make sure you put it on good because uh, it really pushes in there and is in tight. If you don't put it on tight, it's going to fall off when you're driving or, or when somebody else is driving. And they, they might startle them if you have this big rubber piece falling on your shins when you're driving. So that's that. Well, thank you everybody for watching this video I hope uh, hope it was helpful um, can't wait to drive this once I bleed the bleed the brakes should be good got the new brake lines in the front the rubber ones I have more to do with the car but it's getting safer and safer the more I uh, work on it the motor runs great so that's good there's my new gulp valve new old stock so that's it. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And uh, if I don't talk to you, have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend next uh, next weekend. Okay. Bye bye. Happy motoring. Okay, I ended the video, but uh, just wanted to show you the two brake. Uh, those are your brake light lines. Now I don't want to leave everyone hanging that I didn't do the uh, brake uh, bleed. But what I'll do is uh, in a week or so, or less than a month, uh, my schedule's very busy uh, coming up. So what I'll do is uh, less than, hopefully less than a month, I'll uh, comment if uh, I had any issues with bleeding the brakes. So I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the, the second video here and I'll comment. I'll let you know how the brake bled went and if I ran into any problems. If I had to change it up, never know. But uh, once again, this is a 72 MGB. And uh, if you have a similar setup here, I think they use this setup from 68 to 74, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. And that's that. Okay, thanks again. Bye-bye.